developed by Sega in 1991 and published by Electronic Arts for the Sega Dreamcast, Road Rash was a violent and intense combat-focused racing game and left a long legacy of pretenders in its wake. Sequels came and went, but nothing ever truly scratched the itch that Road Rash provided. But now, in 2017, Road Redemption has come out of early access. Developed by Pixel Dash Studios, it promises an authentic spiritual successor experience. <laughs> So that's the important question, an authentic experience. Maybe not replicating the original from the Sega Genesis experience, but is it an authentic experience that the original Road Rash aimed to deliver? Is Road Redemption, all these years later, the spiritual successor that we were hoping for? In a word? Yes, it most certainly is. I feel that Road Redemption is a game that, as of late, stands among a few handful of others that have come out within the last few months that truly show the worth of early access titles. This game was originally released in October of 2014 in early access, and now three years later has come out as a final product. Early access games have gained the stigma of being half-assed, money grabs, garbage that never gets done. Everyone wants to make one, everyone wants to make it happen, but they rarely get seen through, and rarely seen through to fruition. This can especially be seen in a lot of horror and survival type games. But then you have other games. Games like A Hat in Time. Games like Road Redemption. Games that are still in development, but are practically finished as they are, like Subnautica. That prove that early access can indeed be a great boon to games and developers that are still trying to feel out who and what they are and what they're about. Bethesda could probably take a lesson or two from a game like Road Redemption or A Hat in Time. Whereas so many companies ship games that are unfinished, glitchy, buggy pieces of shit. Early access, in theory allows for games to be played by the public before they're officially released by those who know that they're getting an early build of the game, and instead are allowed to critique and help understand and craft the final product, thus allowing the consumer to really feel a part of what is being released. However, normally early access does not deliver on this promise, and instead ends up being somewhat of a scam. Just go take a look at the Steam early access page and you'll see for yourself just what a shit show it can be. But as some games show, early access can be a great thing, and Road Redemption truly shows that, and perhaps offers, indeed, a redemption to the concept of early access. Road Redemption takes somewhat of a Mad Max approach to the Road Rash series. Though it's not officially related, it definitely surely takes inspiration from it, and it's sort of ironic. Whereas the original Road Rash was just about punks and junkies going on the streets and performing illegal and violent races, this new game, Road Redemption, feels much more like what Fury Road feels like to the original Mad Max. Though you can tell they're of a similar franchise, there is so little comparisons to be held between them because of their drastically different nature, even though they're both excellent pieces of work. Road Redemption has a very simple story. There were biker gangs that previously had been in a war and were now on a truce. However, an unnamed assassin has assassinated, you know, that was part of their job, has murdered the head of a weapons company, and now there is a massive bounty put on his head, and all of the gangs are clamoring to claim this bounty, and are willing to break every truce and go to all-out war to get this. You are the unnamed biker that the game takes place with, riding for the jackals. 
you'll fight your way through the Reaper, Sigma, and Phantom territory, all en route through this post-apocalyptic landscape to get a hold of, apprehend, and murder the assassin, claim his bike, claim the bounty, and become rich. Of course, it's not going to be that simple, as the biker gangs that stand between you and him are going to make every effort that you attempt to make an impossible Herculean one to stop you from getting to the assassin and claim the prize for themselves. Not to mention, local law enforcement are aware of this too, and are working on their own to stop you and every other member of every other gang from getting to the assassin. And just from doing anything in general. So what's a guy to do? Beat the shit out of everybody that's between you and the assassin, and race like the dickens to get there. Road Rash was always a focus on racing and combat. It was one of the early combat racing games along with Carmageddon to really show that the two genres could blend and perform really well together. That didn't have to be just some arcade racer where it was just about getting to the top, but you could also combine the fun and freedom of arcade racing along with the hecticness of a combat game of a destruction derby style, and really show just how much fun they all can be together. And to me, Road Redemption really, really nails that fact. Fun. I find so many games these days are devoid of fun. Their distractions, their entertainment, they're something to do, in a way. But, games, again, I'll keep going back to A Hat in Time, which I'll likely make a video on soon because I love that game as well. Road Redemption and games like that have focused back on the fun. This game is not meant to make billions and billions of dollars. This game isn't meant to fit a mold that so many AAA games will have to do. It's meant to be fun. And though it gets a little repetitive, ultimately, it's one that you will not mind at all, and in fact will enjoy the repetition. Because it's a roguelike. I refuse to say roguelite because I think that is a shitty term based off of a mispronunciation. Road Redemption is indeed a roguelike, and now so many of you will likely hear that title and cringe. I know I would, because oftentimes roguelikes are just attempts to cash in on retro gaming styles and prove themselves to hardcore gamers. But instead, this game takes the concept of roguelike and embraces it and becomes a road-like, as it were. Death is permanent in Road Redemption. Once you die, that's it. Your run is over. You start off in the Reaper territory, in the desert, much like the environment seen in Fury Road. You work your way through there, through randomized tracks, missions, enemies, weapons drops, etc. You'll be able to notice the way these tracks sort of piece together after a while. Obviously, in a game where randomization happens, you will notice the interconnected pieces as they repeat. Think of a game like Warframe. After you play enough levels of Grenier or otherwise species levels, you'll start to recognize the environments. And the same is true here in Road Redemption. That said, it's not too big of an issue, because it's meant to be arcadey. So, the tracks themselves are more of a means to an end. What really matters is the gameplay within them, the interactions with enemies, and some of your allies. This game is fast and furious. Yes, I had to go there. It's brutal. It's unforgiving. With each level that you pass, you'll have experience and money. The experience goes into a bank, and you can't do anything with that until the very end of your run. Money is used at the end of levels to go and purchase upgrades. This could be anything from increased health, increased nitrous, new weapons, weapon upgrades, health restoration, anything of the sort. This is only good for your run. Once you die, all of those upgrades are gone. So, if you upgraded your machine gun to an AK-47, which is the max level, well, hope you had fun with that, because whether you win or lose this run, that machine gun AK-47 upgrade will be gone for good, until your next run when you unlock it again. However, you gain experience points for just about everything. Unfortunately, there's no stunt experience. You know, there's nothing, you're not going to get anything for pulling off insane tricks or, drum, or jumps, which is a shame. That said, though, Taking out enemies in creative ways, or just killing them in general, will reward you with health, nitrous, boost, and experience. And I find this greatly encourages high aggression gameplay. Whereas so many games will encourage you to just drive and pass your enemies, 
this game greatly rewards aggression. I sort of see it as a sort of Bloodborne-esque kind of thing in a way. If an enemy hits you and is beating the shit out of you, yeah, you could drive by them, but you're far more better off to go and blow them away in some way, shape, or form. You're not limited to guns. Even though you see me using them in the video here, and this is just because I was recording a run that I was playing for fun, you have a whole bunch of melee weapons, though I find guns to be more effective after a while. You have things like scythes, machetes, swords, katanas, shovels, bats, guitars, yes, guitars. And then as far as the guns go, you have different forms of shotguns, machine guns, rocket launchers, well, more like grenade launchers, sticky bombs, pipe bombs, and the like. Desert Eagle as well. So you have a wide variety of options open to you in combat. And every enemy you kill, you gain money, you gain experience, you gain nitrous, and you gain some health back. So you're encouraged to play aggressive. Yeah, you could complete a race scot-free and not touch anyone. And yeah, there's something to be said for the skill in that. But you gain a lot more experience if you mow down everyone in your path. Aggression is greatly encouraged. Even to the point where my favorite power-up in the game, Razor Blade, which deals, I believe, 125% more damage to enemies, but also, and I believe you get more experience, but also deals 50 damage to you. Now, I, I don't, I'm not sure what it was. I feel like it's... Whatever it is, it deals more damage to you as well when you attack. Yeah, it's not when you get attacked. When you attack, you will take damage. But it does such a tremendous amount to make your attacks that much more powerful that, really... Your attacks and the damage you take from them are negligible. In fact, because you'll be able to kill an enemy in one or two hits, the health you gain back will be greater than the health you lost for attacking them, and thus greatly encourages a highly aggressive style of play. When I discovered this, it completely changed the way I played Road Redemption. I started off playing somewhat frugally. I would play mostly with melee weapons, and I would try and get into safe encounters. I wouldn't want to get ganged up on, I would attempt to grab people and hit them with their bikes, because yes, there is a grapple mechanic, you can send enemies into walls, other vehicles, and the like. And there's also, obviously, the melee weapons. You can attack to the left and right sides of your bike, and you can also block and parry. Now, this is a fun system, though I found it a little awkward, though that's more me than anything else. The game handles it superbly. Though... My issues with it was just failing to block and parry at the appropriate times. You can charge up a critical meter and get some one-hit kills. Also, did I mention Razor Blade is an unblockable attack? So this greatly helps for melee weapons as well. Honestly, Razor Blade, as you can see, that's the third upgrade I have there. Razor Blade is just an amazing upgrade in general, but in my opinion, it greatly encourages the use of guns, which is awesome. Especially after you pour some upgrades into the guns. Now here's the thing that I was saying earlier. Once you die, though, everything goes away. But the experience you've gained, you're allowed to spend that for permanent upgrades that will stay with your character no matter what. At first, these are things like, once again, health upgrades, nitrous upgrades, experience boosters that'll get you, say, 12% more experience, money boosts, and things like that. But after a while, it'll come down to you being able to start at level 3, for instance, instead of from the beginning, so that using the road-like progression system, you don't have to start from the beginning every time. Though I have a feeling by the time you're able to purchase those abilities, <laughs> you're well enough able to tear through the game's levels without much of a sweat. Because once you build up your character, and once you build up their abilities, it becomes really, really easy. And that's the one thing that I find. The game can be a little bit off-putting at first. Because you will get your ass kicked. You'll get through a few levels of Reaper territory and eat shit every time. Then maybe you'll break through to the Sigma territory and you'll get your ass kicked right away. But all the while, you're earning more and more experience to level your character up and gain permanent abilities that will allow you to progress further and further through the game. And eventually you'll come to a point where you have enough to be able to completely dominate and feel like a god on the road. This is how I imagine someone like Mad Max must feel. It is an intense and fun ride after you breach that threshold of ability versus what the enemies can throw at you. And if that becomes too easy, which it will happen after a while, campaign, campaign plus is what you're looking for. Harder enemies, more randomization, more experience, more money, and more balls to the wall action. There's less forgiveness here. 
and it's awesome. Eventually, you'll get to the point where you'll get past those normal upgrades, you'll be able to unlock bikes and other things, but you'll also be able to unlock things where you can start with a certain weapon. Normally, you'll start off with a weapon like a pipe or a scythe, but you'll get to a point where you could start with guns. You'll get to a point where you can start with already upgraded guns. Using the upgrades, you can increase your ammo capacity. These are things that will allow you to become more and more powerful from the outset instead of working your way up through money upgrades, but you can start right away with the experience ones. As such, the game grows more and more easy the more you play, which unfortunately is a shame after a while. At first, it's awesome, because you really feel like you're gaining ground and becoming someone special. You're becoming a hell of a warrior. But then you come to a point where it just feels like you're not going anywhere and just becoming more and more powerful and have to try less and less. And this is kind of a bad thing, but at the same time, it's not. Hear me out. Basically, I think that though the challenge fades after a while, the fun certainly doesn't. Though this is a game that does grow repetitive after a time, it offers a great deal of replay value. And the fun doesn't necessarily wane in, the th in, a, in a linear way. When you do become more powerful, that is when the game's greater difficulty opens up to you. With the different characters that you will unlock throughout the play of the game, a lot of them have different mutators set to them, and that really changed the way you're going to be playing. I'm playing as a military character here. He has higher health, higher armor, and higher abilities with nitrous. He is encouraged to be aggressive as fuck. But there's other characters, like Santa Claus, for instance. Yeah, you can play as Santa Claus, where his one weapon is a candy cane. He can't use guns, and he's a pacifist. He can't attack anyone else. He can only attack bosses, because those are necessary enemies to kill. You have to kill the gang leaders in their designated duel levels. But everything else, he can't do anything about. So, you have to play through the game dodging and evading everyone and actually racing and playing in a much different way. And this is a lot harder. So though the normal game itself might become a little repetitive if you're just playing a normal character and just playing it as is, if you choose to take that challenge and play as a different character, then you'll notice a completely different feeling experience. Oh, and you keep your upgrades too. So even though Santa Claus is a total pacifist, you'll still have the ability to have increased health or greater nitrous. There's some characters that have permanent nitrous on, which means you cannot stop going turbo. Some, you're damaged when you're not speeding up. Some, you're damaged when you are. This really encourages you to experiment with different gameplay styles, and in fact, forces you to. You may find these more fun than the normal straightforward ones, so I say the game is repetitive if you choose to let it be. But if you choose to experiment with the other characters, and in doing so, you'll unlock more characters and more bikes, and thus gain more experience, you will be able to have a great replayable experience. So ultimately, I find this game to be a great amount of fun. It is just what it is and makes no qualms about it. It's an arcade, shooter, racer, combat racing game, however you'd like to say it. It's fun, it's funny, it's crude, and it's violent, and it's intense. I highly recommend you give it a go. Stick with it throughout the early parts where you're getting your ass kicked, and find to the point where you get a rhythm. And though I prefer guns and really work on a very cannibalistic run where I will hit the nitrous and just keep gunning people down as I play, get more nitrous, get more health, and literally destroy my enemies to f provide for my fuel tanks while I'm doing that, while I'm hitting the turbo, killing them on turbo so it doesn't run out, it provides a super exhilarating and fun experience, which I highly recommend. Go ahead and check this game out, give Pixel Dash some love. Not to mention, from a creator standpoint, I really appreciate the opening screen to this game. It says, attention to YouTubers and streamers. We give you full permission to make videos that are monetized of this game. Just turn down the music in-game, because they're licensed tracks and we don't want you to get content ID'd. Wow. That is awesome. So many developers these days may want that, some may not give a fuck, but not many will go out of their way to be like, hey, we know these things happen, 
and we want you to be able to take advantage of the good parts of it because we can both gain from this. Of course, Let's Players and streamers can totally help the life of a game, but just as well, the platforms they happen on can lead to difficulties. So the fact that they give us a heads up and give us full permission in written text form is awesome. Shout out to them for making an amazing game and it's just something that's super fun and highly replayable and highly worth your time. I can't recommend it enough. Check it out and I don't think you'll be disappointed. This is Sora signing off and I hope to see you guys later. Peace.